So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to stop me because part of this is a lot of kind of pseudo lecturing. It's kind of one of the more lecture heavy things I think I've ever done is the beginning of this. So, <clears throat> and some of these symbols, um, I get them messed up sometimes. It's, it's a dyslexic thing, especially when you talk about, we'll get to unions and intersections. Um, so having an idea, and these have been stolen wholeheartedly from the notes section. So you can have access to this. And if you want to write it down, write it down. If you don't, and you just want to go and steal it from there, go feel free to steal it from there. <clears throat> so we have um, the ability to classify items into groups, sets, and different things based on because we want to. <clears throat> um, I, I used to teach biology, and one of the things I actually used to do was just give students a bunch of junk. Whenever I had to teach classification, I gave people a bunch of junk and just say, um, classify stuff, just to get their brains working towards how do you classify stuff. <clears throat> so whenever people do classification, so for instance, uh, they, they give an art, uh, a collection of paintings. I have a friend named Drew Tucker. Um, he might, um, he makes some really weird stuff. At the same time, I'm a music nerd. I have a bunch of CDs. I can call all the art, quote unquote, that I own from those two interests, a set. It is a set of art. Um, so a <clears throat> set is anything that has a way to describe contents. So I'm a Harry Potter nerd. So I have sets of figurines. This is one isn't even opened yet, even though they're like metal. So I have sets of nerd things, you know, I don't know, whatever's on my desk. Um, I can define them based on names. Not a big deal. I can describe them based on numbers. So an example is we could have, uh, do, do, where's the annotation part? Uh, annotate, right there. We have um, sets of all even numbers. <clears throat> so this would be two, four, Four, six, eight, ten, dot, 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 dot. Those numbers. I can keep on going. And okay, so a thing of that you have to remember, and we're going to get to it eventually, is when you do these, uh, you're actually supposed to put them in the curly cube brackets. Two, four, six, eight, ten, dot, dot, dot something like that. <clears throat> or the set of all books written about travel to Chile. Sure, you could do that as well. Um, so you could do it with words or you could do it with, by putting numbers out or words out or whatever you wanna do. It just depends on how you wanna do it. Uh, in this, technically speaking, order is not important. I don't have to do anything in one specific way. It just, that has how things tend to work. <clears throat> um, so we have the numbers one, two, and three. Same thing as three, one, two. The number, the order, not important. Um, but because our life is a lot easier that way and we can organize things better that way, we usually do it from smallest to largest. Um, uh, for instance, uh, and even like the uh, the colors, those are listed. Um, a couple of things are uh, can be done from color, uh, the wavelength, or the color of a rainbow. Those are kind of done the same way. So those are ways that we can organize in, uh, the the numbers. Uh, this out of the way. The next thing. Um, so we have uh, a variable. So we can use any variable just like we did with basic algebra to represent a set. Um, so they like using like A and B and stuff like that. Uh, but you could use anything, any variable to do it. 
Um, they have this weird element here and I have no idea how to do it. I will probably copy it whenever we had to use it. I don't even know what key code it is. This thing right here, <clears throat> it looks like a weird funky E. It means essentially that we have an element of. So if I am doing, you know, here, if I have ghosts in my Harry Potter set here, well, Moaning Myrtle is an element of that set and she's a ghost. So one way to look at it. A little bit more solid way to look like it uh, is if I have the set right here, A equals one, two, three, four. Two is an element is in this set. I have a two there. So I would write two, that weird funky E is an A, which means two is an element of A, or two is in A. Uh, we could also, if I have nothing in my set, if I have an open bracket and a closed bracket, it's an empty set, and you write it with a zero with a line through it. Not a zero, <clears throat> but specifically with that line through it, because that means nothing. Not, not the concept of zero, but nothing at all. Kind of weird. Um, so, so sometimes you have uh, a collection might not contain all the, everything in a set. So uh, I just realized that that. <clears throat> so Chris owns three Madonna albums. So there is a set of Chris's albums, but it's a subset of the larger one because Madonna made more than three albums. I have a subset of the Witcher games, which I'm currently playing because I only own one of the three Witcher games or two of the three Witcher games. So I have a subset. It's not all of the games. It's not all of the albums, just part of it. Um, so a subset of set A is another set that contains only elements from that set A, um, but not necessarily all of those elements. Um, if B is a subset of A, then you have this weird little sideward C with a line underneath it. So B is basically a subset of A, <clears throat> which means B is all of A, but it is parts of A that are, may not be in B. So I can do, for instance, so if I have A is equal to two, four, six, eight, and then B could be two, eight. So since we have a two and an eight in B, we have a two and an eight here. So we have elements of A in B, but not all of A. You have this four and the six that are not in it. So we had to figure out, you know, that's just a way to say there's some of A, a B in A, but not all of A is part of B. Kind of weird thing, but that's part of it. Um, so a proper subset is a subset that is not identical to the original set. So there are fewer elements. So B is a proper subset of A, or if this happens, then you have the, without the little underlying thing. So that thing goes away. B side word or small weird C A. <clears throat> so we have three sets below. So A is all even numbers. B is two, four, six, and C is two, three, four, six. So B is a sub is a proper subset of A because two, four, and six are all even numbers. Um, so it's true that B is a subset of C, but C is not a subset of A. But so two, four, and six, two, four, and six. So B and C, or B is a subset of C. But C, because it has that three there, and three isn't an even number, is not going to be a subset of A. So too long didn't read or didn't pay attention. Subset has elements. Proper subset 
all elements are of set are present in another set, but not all of that other set is re represented. So all the numbers are still there. Everything's still there, but you just have a couple of things that are just slightly different. I just realized I should probably be using this one and not that one. Are present in another set, but not all of that other set is represented. Tate clear of drops. So confused, good. It is kind of weird. It's it's it'll either be extremely easy to get or very weird. Um, where it gets kind of weird for uh, for this is when you start looking at union intersections and complements. Uh, so we have unions. So a, um, you so union is the little u thing. A union is two sets containing all the elements contained in either set A or B or both sets. So a union it's a u b or a or b is I take all the numbers or letters or items, whatever, from A and all of them from B and just put them into one. An intersection contains only elements that are both in A or B. So it's a little uh, upside down U or N or A and B. So let me get these. Everything in from both combined. So those are everything that's in both combined. An intersection is only what's in both. So, and a complement is <clears throat> everything that is not in set, uh, set. So different ways you can look at it. <clears throat> so quick examples. So A union B, A or B. So we have A is red, green, and blue. B is red, orange, and yellow. So A union B is everything from both combined. So in this case, we have red, green, actually, sorry, I had to do this. Red, green, blue, yellow, orange. So I'm gonna do something weird and I hate to say it, but it's true. And it's gonna sound very pedantic. Red and red are not the same. Spelling is very important when you're looking at sets because, for instance, if I'm doing names and I have uh, my unpick mine, these two names are pronounced the same, Anderson and Anderson, but they're not the same. Spelling matters capitalization matters, everything matters. So even though it pained me because I know what I'm talking about, and I know all that, you really have to make sure when they pick red, blue, green, and blue, all lowercase, you have to do the same thing. Sorry. I don't like it, but that's life. So the second one is looking at A, the intersect of B. So I guess I should do this. Oop. A or B equals, there we go.
So A or B, or A and B rather. <clears throat> so let's any of them that are in both. So I have red and red. I have green, blue, yellow, orange. So the only one that's in both is red. That simple. Only one thing is in both sets. So when I'm looking at the intersection, it is everything that has elements of both. So see, the uh, not and C, so A complement, so everything that's not in set A, and we're gonna combine that with everything that's in C. So C is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So we have yellow and white. So the weird thing with this, whenever you're looking at complements, see we do this is A prime. So A prime is everything, every possible color that we have listed that's not in there. So I have red is in there, green is in there, blue is in there, but yellow, orange, green, purple, and white. So that is the complement of A. And remember, we're doing uh, intersect. So on this one, I see which one here do I have that also is in C. Um, so you could have done it the way I'm doing it now. And then I could have done C has red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, like this. And then I could go through and just say, well, I have yellow, orange, oh, I'm sorry, this one didn't have green. purple and purple. So in that case, we would have uh, a complement or, or and C is gonna be equal to yellow, orange, and purple. Those are the colors that are both in the complement of A and C. Uh, then A intersect D, so I have yellow, white, red, orange, and blue, red, green, blue. So on D, there are no similar, so A or, sorry, A and B. Uh, since no similar, so there's nothing in both of those together. I have nothing in A, I have nothing in C. So that would mean I have an empty set or the not because there's nothing that overlaps the two. <clears throat> oh, there it is. So confused everyone yet? So, um, because complements are everything that is not in the original, if you have something like color, um, there are so many random colors that technically would fit in there. 
Um, we you uh, because of this, we only use complements usually whenever they're done with intersections because uh, we can deal with those. Because I could have logically come back here <coughs> and said, since it's the complement of A, and I going to look at it anything that has the same color or same thing for here i'm not going to do include because they're not going to be in both sets so i could just go through and eliminate whatever's in a from c so just basically subtract them and that's going to be my answer that would work <clears throat> the other way to do it is when you have a universal set uh so a universal set is when all elements that we are interested in are in it. So for instance, if I have a set number of numbers, that's a universal set. If I have a set number of books and the author is long dead, that's a set number or universal set because nothing's gonna get added to it. It all depends on the context you're using it in. Um, so, <clears throat> so for instance, all books in the library, you can't, I mean, you will add more books to the library, but right now when I'm searching through the library, that is a universal set. I'm not going to get any more books today from this library. That's all I have. <clears throat> Facebook friends, universal set would be all your friends on Facebook. I mean, you could add more, but as of right now, that's all that you have in there. If you still use Facebook, you know. A uh, set of numbers, universal set would be all whole numbers, all integers, all real numbers, whatever part you can just set up based off of what you're looking at. With letters, you have 26 letters. Uh, if you're doing different alphabets, you have more or less, depending on your language. But the languages you're working with, that the letters from that system are going to be your set. So, <clears throat> so all whole numbers from one to nine, I can do that. And A is one, two, and four. I can find A. So U is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's all the whole numbers from one to nine. I can easily find that. And I have A as one, two, and four. <coughs> so I'm going to one two four so the complement of a is everything that's left after i take out one two and four so three five six seven eight nine that is a complement everything that's not there plain and simple So this whole A complement intersects C. Um, we can group things together. Uh, so grouping symbols can be shown uh, as if they're arithmetic uh, in order to force op order of operations. So we have a universal set of animals, cat, dog, rabbit, mouse, cow, duck, pig, deer, and frog. I don't make these. Uh, we also have the following sets. We have an H set, which is a cat, dog, rabbit, mouse, and an F set, which is dog, cow, duck, pig, and rabbit, and a W set, which is duck, rabbit, deer, frog, and mouse. <clears throat> so this follows the same order of operation that you did before. So the first thing we're going to do, and this A is H intersect F. So H and F. So we're going to write out H equals cat, dog, rabbit, mouse. And F equals dog, cow, duck, pig, rabbit. So we have dog, we have a rabbit, 
So we don't have a mouse, a cat, a dog, a duck, a pig. So H and F, so that's usually what I do for shorthand, or H or F, is gonna be equal to dog and rabbit. So that's the first part. And then we're gonna do a union with W. So W is duck, rabbit, deer, frog, mouse. <coughs> So H and oh, H or F union W or H or F and W is equal to everything that's in both lists. So we have dog, rabbit, duck, deer, frog, and a mouse. I just realized I missed a comma. So that's kind of what you do. <clears throat> uh, these are the intersection is kind of, you have to make sure uh, whatever method works for you. Like sometimes if I did it, I used a highlighter and just did different color highlighters to match, match up numbers, depending on how many colors you have. Or you could also do circling. That works too. Whatever you need to do to see which ones is in both. Um, what I would actually tend to do here is if I had a dog, I don't have dog, if I have rabbit, I would actually come down here and cross out the rabbit so that I make sure I don't, Listed twice. For this one, we have uh, the union of F and W. So we're going to do that one first. So F U W or F or W. So we have, so it's, it's union, it severs them both. So we have dog, cow, duck, pig, rabbit. So that is everything that's an F. Uh, then we had duck already. We had rabbit already. Deer. Frog. And mouse. <clears throat> so that is our set for F or W. So from here, we had to do H, H, so H or H and. So I'm going to make sure I do the right words, H and. I had them backwards here. And this is, and oh, and there we go. So we have H. And F U W or H or F or A H H and F or W. Oh. So at that point we have to figure out which of this is also in. Here. So we have a dog, yes. 
We have a cow. Nope. A duck. No. A pig. No. A rabbit. Yes. <clears throat> a deer. No. A frog. No. A mouse. Yes. So we have three items when we did all that. We have a dog, a rabbit, and a mouse. So much fun. So the whole, this all leads up to something called a Venn diagram. Um, and these will be the, your nemesis, I'm sorry, for this uh, chapter. <clears throat> so these were created by John Venn in 1880. Uh, they used overlapping circles, uh, building ideas based on uh, Euler. Oh, sorry, Euler, not Euler. Um, so a Venn diagram, uh, is where you have these sets represented by a circle, uh, usually done inside a rectangle. So the rectangle would be the universal set. <clears throat> the areas of the circle is elements common to both sets. The size has nothing to do with it. It's just done for convenience. Venn diagrams can illustrate the interactions are two or three or four sets. These have actually started to become internet memes, which is just bizarre. So the first one right here, A is uh, a subset of B. So you have B here and A is inside of it. So there are parts of B that are not in A, but all of A is part of B. <coughs> so A union B is this guy right here. So it's all the numbers inside both circles. So you'll have numbers associated with these of how many counts and all that. <clears throat> what you're going to do is just count up this, this, and this, and those will be A union B. So A complement is all elements not in set A. So A complement B will cons or intersect B with all the elements in set B that are not in set A. So in this one, A complement is actually. Uh, doo -doo 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 all of this area. So everything outside of that circle. So B complement, for instance, and this one is just everything out here. <clears throat> this one right here, the, the semi-circle part is A complement intersection B. So this part right here, because this will pop up on homework. Uh, A intersection B is the middle part is where there's an overlap. That's what that part is. <clears throat> so this one, and I'm actually, I will save this and I will upload this after the class, will be very useful when you do your homework because these questions will come up. So this leads to something called cardinality. <clears throat> All cardinality is, is something where we count the number of elements in a set. Uh, so we do this using this N of A. That's all it is. That N of A means the number of within set A. So if you have a set here, two sets, A is one, two, three, four, five, six, B is two, four, six, eight. When it's asking for the number of B, you just count how many are in B. So you have four elements, four. So the number in A union B. So we have to find A union B is, so we have, sorry, one, two. So this is everything that's in both sets, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So that is A union B. So once again, I just look and put all the numbers from both of them into a new set. Then I count. So the number of A union B is equal to one, two, so one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven numbers in that set. So I have seven numbers in A union B. <clears throat> uh, so the number of A intersect B, so this time we have to find A intersect B. So we have two, four, six, eight here. So two, four, six. So it's gonna be even numbers. So we're just gonna look at the even numbers that are in A. So two is in there, four is in there, and six is in there. So we don't go up to eight in A, and there's no odd numbers in B. So that's A intersection B, A and B. So the numbers are in both of them. So the number of A intersect B is three, because we have three of them. <coughs> So another one, the number of P, where P is a set of English names for the months of the year. So there are 12 months of the year. So we have 12. And it can be that simple. Where it gets weird, and the reason I said to do the other one, and let me go ahead and get it back over here. Copy and make this smaller. Is this guy right here. <clears throat> so they want you to know, be able to find, and this is a very good example of what you would be doing on your homework. So they want you to find N of A, the number in A, so, get, yeah. so A is this guy right here, okay? So on these, you would take 11 plus eight to get your answer of 19. So when they, the next one, they want to know the number of number of complement A. So there's two ways you can do this. I can, two ways to do it. One, count up all other numbers depending on how big of the numbers are and how many how big is your your thing is it could be easy could be hard i don't know so i would count up the four and the two and that would be my numbers two count up uh u and subtract a from it <coughs> So the other way is to find out how big your universal set is. Uh, for me personally, I'd look and see if you're going to have to use your universal set before you choose your way. If you're not going to use it, which I can see that the universal set is not used, I'm more tempted to use the first method. If I am going to use the universal, I'm going to need that number anyway. I'm probably just going to calculate it. So. It just depends on what they ask for. So on this one, I'm gonna add up. I have four and two that are not A's, which would give me six. So my size, the number in complement A is six. <coughs> uh, four B, so they wanna know the number in B. So that's going to be, let me do a different color. These guys right here. So I have two sets that are in B. It's everything in the circle B. So that's eight and four. So we have 12 that are in B. So the number for our 
complement B is going to be, so I'm going to count up everything that's not in B. So I have 11 and I have two. So these are part that is just A and not B and that two there. So that means I have 13 that are not in B. <coughs> e is the number that is an A union B. So this is where I'm going to use this guy finally. A union B is this one right here. So what I'm going to do is count this number, this number, and this number. So 11 plus 8 plus 4. So I have 23 that are an A or B or both of them. <coughs> and then F is the number in A intersect B complement. So A intersect B complement is this guy down here. Let's do it in color. This one right here. So they want to know all of them that are in A, but not in B. I think A, not in B. Oh, sorry. All of them that are not in A, but are in B. So in this case, it's looking for this number right here. Because this is B complement, not B. A complement, not B. Or B complement, A. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards. It's not that. It's this one right here. Because that one is in A which is what we're looking at, but it's not in B. So whichever one doesn't have the little dash on, that's the circle I look at. But if it happens to be in anything in B, so that little middle slice, I don't care. So that would be 11. So you can see how these are both kind of easy once you get used to it, but kind of hard and annoying because of the new symbols. That's OK. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask. Let me actually stop recording because we're about 50 minutes in.